Forest for WRAL. If you think North Carolina gets more than its fair share of storms, you're right. North Carolina is the fourth likeliest U.S. state to get hit by a hurricane. Why? Hurricanes generally follow this path. They form in the eastern Atlantic and move in a west-northwest direction across the tropics. When they get far enough north to be influenced by the jet stream, they curve north and then northeast. That bit of land sticking out in the Atlantic is the North Carolina coast. It's farther east than any point in Florida, Georgia, or the South Carolina coast, making us a storm target. But not every hurricane follows this exact path, and not every storm gets and stays strong enough to qualify as a hurricane. Luckily, an increasingly sophisticated network of weather tracking devices can alert us to potential danger. In fact, I just got word of a newly formed storm. I'll update you on its progress, and you can help me track it using the touch screen below. Okay, go ahead and press day one. Okay. And this is Timothy Ringo of 413 US. We're going to have my niece Maria do a little storm tracking exercise with WRAL model, mock storm tracking. Let's see how she does. Meteorologists at the National Hurricane Center are tracking a tropical depression, which is southeast of Cape Verde Islands, just off the west coast of Africa. Another much bigger storm is about 850 miles to the northwest. It's disrupting the flow of heat and moisture into our new storm, preventing it from intensifying. So I don't expect any significant development for at least a few days. So, our first day one has an area of interest near the Cabo Verde Islands. Let's see what our junior storm tracker predicts for her intensity and location of this storm. She's expecting it to be a Category 4 hurricane. Right through the main development region. See what the exercise says it's going to be. Exercise forecast. She's pretty well nailed that on her on the day one. Day five of the exercise. The tropical depression has been upgraded to a tropical storm, meaning that it now has winds of more than 39 miles per hour. It has moved slowly across the Atlantic and is now about 1,000 miles east of the Lesser Antilles Islands. It could pick up some speed and strength now. All right, we now have a tropical depression in the main development region. Let's see what our junior storm tracker is going to pick for her intensity and location. Anticipating it being a category two, going just to the north of the Lesser Antilles. See what the exercise says it's going to do. Exercise has it going a little north, curving ahead of the Lesser Antilles. Now we're at day seven on the exercise. As we expected, the storm has intensified. It's now officially a Category 1 hurricane. What is the definition of a hurricane? It's a storm with heavy rain and sustained winds of at least 74 miles per hour. Hurricanes are rated from 1 to 5, with 1 being the weakest and 5 the strongest. The hurricane we're watching has begun to move toward the northwest. It's about 150 miles northeast of the Leeward Islands. Do you think it will continue to move quickly and gather even more strength? All right, day seven forecast. What is our junior storm tracker going to do now that she has a category one hurricane on her hands? She keeps it as a category one. And has it been moving towards the northwest? Let's see what the exercise says it's going to do. And a really good forecast there on that day seven prediction. Now we're at day eight. Surprisingly, the hurricane has weakened and has now been reclassified as a tropical storm. It has also slowed down. A hurricane is like a spinning top. It wobbles. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell if it's changing its track or just wobbling. What do you think the storm will do next? 
All right, day eight. What's our junior storm tracker gonna predict? Mm -hmm. Oh, she's mm -hmm. thinking rapid intensification back to category two. And has it going northwest? <laughs> That projected path would take it out to sea, see what it actually does. It actually goes more west, so a big miss on that forecast. Let's see how she does on day 12. The storm has rebounded and then some, becoming more powerful than ever. It's now a category three hurricane, capable of causing major damage. Even more alarmist, it's close to the US now, just 115 miles east of the Bahamas. One thing to look out for is the influence of the Bermuda High. It's a high-pressure dome in the region that circulates in a clockwise manner. And this could alter the storm's path, steering it away from Florida and towards the Carolinas. What do you think? All right, our junior forecast has a major hurricane on her hands. All right, you're already category three. Where is she gonna? Where does she think this is gonna go? She thinks it's going to stay Watch category where three. Going. Watch where your line's going. She thinks category three. Now remember what that thing just told you about the Bermuda High. Okay. And she thinks it's going to ride the ridge up the coastline. Let's see what the forecast shows. A very good forecast prediction on that. My child is predicting that it is. <laughs> the hurricane has made landfall. Its eye is right over Cape Fear. A low pressure system over Tennessee steered the storm on an even more northerly course than anticipated, putting North Carolina squarely in its path. The coast is being battered by high storm surge. There's heavy rain and flooding. Strong winds are uprooting trees and damaging homes. This is a major disaster. All right. We have eminent landfall. What does our storm tracker think it's going to do? It's right near the coast. She still thinks category three. And remember, it goes back out, it goes in a circle. So, watch the line. So is she pretty, like, does she think it's going to ride the ridge all the way around or are we going to see eventual landfall? Okay. At this point it's right at, right just south of Wilmington for this exercise. What do you mean? He is making it. And the actual path? Not bad. Not far off. His friend, his friend. Yeah. So our storm exercise for our junior storm tracker was tracking Hurricane Fran of 1996. Which landed in North Carolina on September 5th, 1996. Fran caused billions of dollars of damage, mostly right here in North Carolina. Right there. Yep. Look down. Look down. Private property damage, public property damage, farm damage, timber loss. And those are dollars. And having to figure out how to get the school in the middle of one. Yeah, because the only way they close school in Pennsylvania is if we had a lot of snow. Okay. Let's see who our junior storm tracker is, if we can get her to turn around. 
And our junior storm tracker is my niece, Maria. What do you want to be when you grow up, Maria? Oh, that means that you would be one of the people that helps evacuate people during natural disasters like that. Would you want to actually go out into a hurricane and save people? It's a very good cause. Well, this is Timmy Thuringo Force 13 US with my niece Maria taking the Hurricane Fran storm tracking exercise courtesy of WRAL Storm Central. Thank you.